Hi, Janet. How are you? Hi, Euros. I'm great. How are nice. you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good chatting with you this way. Yeah, it's excellent. I was thinking that you and I used to do Skype meetings about 15 years ago. I was thinking about how long I've been at Tennis Canada, and then I was thinking I've probably known you that long. Yes. <laughs> over, 20, <laughs> over 20 years, maybe. Over 20 years. You and I met early 2000s, very early 2000s. So just about 20 year mark, I think. Yeah. And you yeah. were 20 oh. years old or something. I did not have any more hair than I have now. <laughs> <laughs> Similar amount of hair. Yeah. <laughs> and you look the same, though. You really do. You well, haven't changed good. much. You did have shorter hair. Yes, I might have. Right. I might have. Well, back then you were the director for wheelchair tennis with Tennis Canada, and um, you've done so much for tennis within the country as well as outside of the country too. So thank you for joining me today and chatting with me about your experience. I really appreciate no it. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, Great. of course. And so right now you're the director of wheelchair tennis, but also the manager for national events. And so, you know, what is currently on your plate with Tennis Canada? I can imagine it being quite a busy time for you. Well, it's been very challenging this last year. Um, I can imagine. Still working at the two, the two positions. And so we've, with the event side, uh, we've had to cancel a lot of events, all of our national junior championships and, national, mm -hmm. and ITF junior events. They all were canceled in 2020 and all the wheelchair events as well and senior events. So everything. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been super challenging. We've had a lot of um, Tennis Canada has been hit massively with the pandemic and loss of revenue and funding. And I think we cut 40% of our staff members last June. Wow. So I feel very fortunate that I am still, still working and still at Tennis Canada. And mm -hmm. um, I've course. weathered that storm for now anyway. <laughs> and so you've been with Tennis Canada, you said uh, when we chatted a few days ago, uh, 23 years. 23 years, yes. Wow. Hard That's, to believe. <laughs> you must be doing something right. So, I think so. Um, I, yes, go ahead. I started out with just the wheelchair portfolio for the mm -hmm. first uh, two or three years and mm -hmm. then added in the event side. So it's kind of fun to have the combination of both mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so since um, there has been a change in a lot of the workload in the last year, I understand you also had additional uh, responsibility added to your plate. Yeah, that's been fun, uh, mm -hmm. challenging, but fun. You know, as I mentioned, we lost 40% of our staff members. So the people who are still working, about 70, 75 of us, have all taken on lots of different responsibilities. So mm -hmm. I am working a lot more in the high performance administration on the Olympic side. I was, I am doing, also doing a lot on the Paralympic side, but I had that before. Mm -hmm. So a lot of logistics leading up to the Olympic Games in Tokyo, which were postponed from 2020 to 2021. And as we were chatting about a few minutes ago, it's just so challenging to plan anything. Um, right. You know, you think the events are going to happen and then they get canceled or just the, the way everything is delivered now is so different. But um, anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, so I've mm -hmm. added Olympic Games and karting on the, high, on the Olympic side. And yeah, just working a lot more on um, high performance of men. So really mm -hmm. enjoying that. Lots of learning and uh, keeping busy. Right. Well, and, you know, through the 23 years, but also before that, it sounds like, you know, your your career was never really stagnant. You you started as a tennis player when you were when you were a little girl. Mm -hmm. And so walk us through from, you know, when you got into tennis till now, uh, you have quite a unique uh, set of. Uh, circumstances that led you through your career? Yeah, it's kind of interesting um, thinking about it and mm -hmm. thinking that tennis really has been part of my life from, I think, nine. I started playing as a little kid, which is late now, right. <laughs> but, but it was good then. We used to go to this uh, cottage in the summertime. Um, I lived in Ontario, Cambridge, Ontario, and we went to the cottage. And so that's what I did in the summer. I took some tennis lessons and fell in love with it and then started playing tournaments and I did end up going to junior nationals and some of my I think the 16s and 18s those sorts of years mm -hmm. um, and then 
as I got older, I started taking some of the coaching certification courses because I knew, well, I liked it and it's a good summer job. So I did that in the summers and then I uh, went to university in the state. So did an NCAA scholarship, play tennis. So that was exciting and uh, coaching in the summer times. And then when I graduated well, I, and I got a business degree, so got my education at the same time as uh, competing and traveling in the States, business degree, and then came back and I worked as a tennis director at a club in Ontario. And then I went back to the States and did a master's degree and tennis again paved the way for me because I worked as the um, assistant women's coach at the university. I didn't know that. West, West Virginia University. So that paid for me to go back to school and I got a master's degree in sport admin. So tennis still keeping me going there. Mm -hmm. Came back and wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. But at the time I landed what I thought was my dream job. And that was um, director of junior development at the OTA. Ontario tennis and I remember as a kid looking up to the people that worked at the OTA and how how great that was so started that did that for about eight years really loved it and that allowed me to be coaching and some coaching but, but also um, mm -hmm. it kind of morphed into director of player development anyway and then um, ended up getting my coach three somewhere in along those lines um, then what happens after that <laughs> then i began the working at, then i began working at tennis canada <laughs> mm -hmm. and um at the time you know i had been in tennis for a long time and and an opportunity came available in wheelchair tennis and it was part time to start and i remember um carmel durdell calling me uh, from tennis canada and saying you know i've got something that might be a little interesting a little different so mm -hmm. i thought okay still tennis uh, but something different. So anyway, started as the uh, manager of wheelchair tennis at that point, and then added in the the event side to make it full time. And it's allowed me to do a ton of traveling. So with this role, I've been able to go to a lot of World Team Cup events in uh, different locations, China. Um, I was trying to think of some of some of them. Um, Japan, New Zealand, Italy, Sweden. Sweden. You were, you've been at I some of them. <laughs> you've been there. Netherlands, Switzerland, yeah. all over the place. Uh, been to three Paralympic Games: Beijing, Athens, and London. So that's been exciting. Amazing. Um, worked as an official a little bit along the way, a coach on the Paralympic side. So it's kind of interesting just to think that that fun summer when I was nine years old has turned into a lifetime of career and travel and opportunities. So that's pretty, amazing. Pretty that's amazing. That. <laughs> Big applause on that one. Really. It's, it's, uh, it's been fun. Yes. I mean, it sounds like it was. And, uh, you know, you can tell that as you're going through each of these stages, there's probably a different skill set that was developed, different experiences, different challenges. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was on the receiving end of that as well, you know, thanks to you, because you involved me into wheelchair tennis, as well as the national events that you manage and oversee. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not only did you have so far an amazing career within Tennis Canada doing what you do, but you also allowed others to grow and, and develop within the industry. So I think that's, that's really amazing. We actually worked together in a few different ways, didn't we? Over we the did. years. Yes. Yes, I mean, with wheelchair tennis and then events. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said at the start, you know, these Skype meetings um, uh, were something that you started quite quite a way back because you're you're the only, are you the only person within the uh, within the organization that's based out of Vancouver that works across the country in that managerial capacity? I don't, um, there's a, a handful of people. I think mm -hmm. um, Oded and Anne are also based out here in okay. officiating and then running their the training program out here, um, mm -hmm. but I'm probably one of the longest standing ones that's been working from a home based office for all the all of the 23 years. Right. And it's worked out well. I really yeah. I quite enjoy it. I'm very used to it. So I guess when COVID happened and everyone started working from home, it was quite a transition for a lot of people. Right. Um, but I, I think it's been really good because um, being one of the few people at Tennis Canada working remotely for many years. Um, 
sometimes you can feel a little bit left out because you're not necessarily in the office and with everyone in either Toronto or Montreal, but now everybody's at home. So mm -hmm. I think it's been a good exercise for everyone to see that you, you can do, you can be very productive from home. And it was kind of nice to have everyone in the same position for a little while. Right, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, since this started, I know how many more meetings I've had with people from Ontario or from across mm -hmm. the world, really. And it, it sort of brought us closer in a way, even though, you know, there is certainly a uh, disconnect from sort of a personal way um, mm -hmm. face to face. But at the same time, it's something that, you know, I, I, I feel like I understand a little bit more as to what you were doing all these years, because back in the early 2000s, I would think, you know, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, that's you know, Janet is working from home, mm -hmm. from her home office, must give her a lot of flexibility and so forth. So, you know, so what are some of the positives and some of the challenges that you've encountered over the years, since you have so many years of experience of doing this, that this is all just new for us, um, that you could uh, give to someone else that's uh, just getting adapted to this lifestyle of, of work, uh, for now at least? Well, I guess it does take some discipline working from home. I, I like being on my own. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I would suggest. I, I know that it, it certainly gives a lot of flexibility, which is something I've enjoyed, being able to balance family activities um, mm -hmm. with kids and so on, and being able to still attend those activities and get my work done. So um, good question. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of staying in the office mm -hmm. and uh, getting it done. It's good to take breaks every little while. Mm -hmm. uh, go for walks, get some fresh air, ride your bike, come back into the office. I do quite a bit early in the morning, especially because I'm on the West Coast and often dealing with the Eastern time zone. Mm -hmm. So I like to do a lot before uh, my household gets up and gets going. I've already done a couple of hours and that usually is a good time to get work done. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think it's important to have a nice space. I have an actual office. One of the bedrooms in our home is turned into an office and that gives me a dedicated, quiet space that I've set up for myself. Mm -hmm. I think it would be really challenging to, you know, work from the kitchen table or different situations that people are facing right now. Right. Um, yeah. So, it's so yeah, yeah, no, and, and I think you said you know, something to start there to be really disciplined. So, you know, I've read an article somewhere once how, you know, when you allow people to work from home or their home office, they end up actually doing more work than the average. And so, you know, do you find your, do you, you, do you set yourself your own schedule as to sort of when you are in your office mm -hmm. uh, and treat it like that as well? I do. Uh, I think it's just a given that by, in my case, by, 6 30 or 7 i'm probably working mm -hmm. and um as i said i come and go from the office as needed but right. um yeah I, I don't i yeah i think it's um there's not a lot of distractions in a way like once i'm in the office i don't have other things going on people aren't stopping by and uh wanting to right. talk about things or distract me in that way so i think i'm probably in a shorter period of time, quite productive mm -hmm. compared to if I was in the office and uh, right. you know, talking, talking and chatting to people. Of course, of course. And so, you know, uh, through COVID, um, uh, you know, working from home as well as balancing your own life, your own lifestyle mm -hmm. and uh, family time as well. You know, what are, what are some of the positives for you that you found over the last year or so come through the situation because people are often so focused on the negatives and the, and the mm -hmm. downfalls, which we all know there's a lot of them, but what are a couple of positive things for you or, or, or habits that you've developed um, for yourself that um, someone would find interesting? Well, I have to say there are a number of silver linings with COVID as terrible as it is. And I think we know all the negative things. Um, and, you know, it's been tragic for many, many people. I think what I've, noticed and noticed it early on last March, April, how much um, more relaxed we were as a family because we were not, because activities had shut down. So no longer were we running. It felt like we were on a treadmill before running work to activities, to dinner, to the next activity and just a constant rushing. And we don't rush anymore. And that's nice. 
we really, and, I, and I've talked to some of my friends and it's the same, you know, everyone's slowed down. Um, yes. So I think we, our family is certainly committed to keeping it like that when things Good. eventually open up again. I thought it would be opened up by now, but we're, we're still basically doing the same thing. It's a little bit boring sometimes because we haven't done much different from what we were doing six months ago. But I really like the slow, the slow pace and the relaxation that way. Um, yeah, and I think we, well, we've had a lot more time together. Um, mm -hmm. We have a 14 year old daughter and almost 15 and it's almost like that we've had a bonus year with her it's not that she wasn't already going to be here but she was you know getting to the point where she'd be out doing her activities and she'd be wanting to be with her friends more and away from us more right and i guess we're fortunate that she still likes to hang out with us and so it's been nice to have that extra bit of um maybe influence on her as well mm -hmm. in an important time in her teenage years so think that's another silver lining but i'm really looking forward to traveling again i can't wait until we can actually go somewhere <laughs> you know? out of all the spots that you've traveled to and i know you've traveled to a lot of places what's your favorite or where are you going to go next when you can well this isn't ex well this isn't too ex sorry i'm going to say it's not exotic but it, it could be depending depending <laughs> but we want to go to hawaii we awesome. really love hawaii and have been there a few times so mm -hmm. That'll be a go-to place as soon as we can, just to get the sun and the palm trees and, you know, just that atmosphere. Awesome. Of course. But there's other places that we keep talking about that we'd, we'd like to go as well. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More exotic ones. Probably Japan is on the list to get to. Um, who knows? Asia. Yes. <laughs> all, all, there's all kinds of places. I could list many of them. I know. So and so um, how, how do you manage to stay active and keep yourself healthy and in shape, um, you know, given that you're not coaching right now anymore for years at a time. And so most of your job is in the office. And, and I know many people are struggling to find that balance of keeping themselves active while working from home and given the restrictions we're experiencing right now. And given that I'm getting older, <laughs> but you didn't want so me to say that. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing a lot of walking. And it's, it's kind of funny because I used to think walk didn't count as exercise. Um, but now I do because I'm older um, and it hurts a lot more to run and, and things like that. And it's, I find it so easy to get injured now. So I do a lot of walking. I love to get the fresh air. Um, now that we're getting out of winter, I'm going to get on my bike and do some cycling. I enjoy that as well. Have a little home gym here. So I try to do that early in the morning as well, get in a little half hour workout or something, most days, not all the time. Those are the main things that I'm doing right now. Um, awesome. What about you? What yeah, are you uh, doing? Um, I'm enjoying walking as well, just so you know. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> At 37, I'm enjoying walking um, more than ever before, um, particularly early mornings. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up early, you go outside, uh, yeah. streets are more or less fresh empty, air. fresh air. Um, I like listening to audio tapes, so books while I'm walking outside, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, I like swimming because it's easy on the joints. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, I, I'm still on the tennis court uh, about 10 to mm -hmm. 15 hours a week, which, which I love. absolutely love that That's sort great. of um, little cardio you get there, but it, it's really more just the, the activity. The and, other thing um, I really love is kayaking. kayaking. And you know that because I we've do. kayaked together before. <laughs> But I, I have a single kayak now. We've been in the double. Mm -hmm. And prior to the winter, so all last spring and summer and fall, I would I can handle the kayak by myself, which I really love. In, and we have a van, and it goes into the van, down to the beach I go, and I really enjoy that, going out for a paddle in the sunshine. And I, it's quiet and peaceful right. and getting exercise at the same time. I love that. I so I'm going to be able to start that again soon. Good. <laughs> I know it's beautiful because you get the fresh air, the sunshine, and, and like you said, it's just the sound of uh, water around you and some yeah. birds. I like yeah, that we're a lot, we're, we're so. lucky living in Vancouver, definitely. We are very <laughs> fortunate. So, uh, Janet, you're definitely one of the greatest examples of a female leader uh, with Tennis Canada, but uh, at the same time, most likely worldwide for, for many girls and aspiring uh, tennis coaches and leaders. 
So, you know, is there anything from your side that, that, that you would want to say or send a message to someone that um, is currently, you know, having a passion for, for the game and potentially on the fence of, you know, what to do next? I think it's so important for girls uh, and women who are involved in tennis now just to know I guess I'll think about girls mostly, mm -hmm. that there's there's so many opportunities in tennis and sport uh, for a career. And I didn't realize I was going to end up having a career in tennis when I started playing, but there's just so many opportunities and you don't need to be the top player in Canada to be able to stay in the sport. Um, there's opportunities in coaching, leadership positions at provincial tennis associations anywhere in Canada at Tennis Canada. It could be in the areas of marketing, officiating, communications. So it's wide open. The board of directors are, are the chair of our current board of directors is a woman who, T Jennifer Bishop, she played um, and she's, I think she's actually number one in the world in one of the uh, senior categories now too. So it's just, there's just so many opportunities and I would really encourage um, girls who are playing now to stay with it and contact your provincial association or contact Tennis Canada, contact me and just we'll find some opportunities for you. You can make a career in it and that's, that's something to keep in mind. Definitely. Well, and, you know, being on the receiving end of that as well, when I was younger, you know, going through all the coaching educations, um, Canada certainly has one of the best systems in place for mm -hmm. someone to to achieve higher levels of education within the coaching world, but also broader. So, you know, I really uh, want to thank you, Janet, for your time today, but also for, for all the opportunities you, that you have opened for others like myself as well in the past uh, 23 years at Tennis Canada. So keep <laughs> thank going. You, Euros. Keep going. It's <laughs> my pleasure. And yes, I'm yeah. going to keep going for an, a while longer. Good. Thanks very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you, Janet. And talk soon. Okay. Yeah.